In this video we're going to look at two differentials, not one, but two. Right, here they are. These came off a TD5. This is the rear differential, this is the front. Apart from looking black, they look almost the same. But you can see instantly how short this differential is if we put this flange together here. Uh, like I said, this was originally on the P38 and this is a four pin uh, centered uh, piece. There's a two piece which is weak and there's a four piece which is marginally weak. But we'll come to that in a minute. So why were they sent to me? They were sent to me because they had been rebuilt in Toronto, allegedly, and they wanted me to know what I thought of them. So I cleaned them all up and they seemed to be very very good but I noticed that nobody had put any marking on the wheel. So I thought to myself well I'll just the bearings look good. I got me I took this piece off here and, and I didn't touch this one but I took this piece off, looked the bearings looked at fine, pulled the pinion out, everything was good. But what happened was when I put the, the cover back on here, the, the, the seal, see if I can spin this off. Because this, this uh, differential was tight. Why was it tight? Well, it was really, it was really easy. Though. I had to take the oil seal out to, to get it to turn, but this was its problem. The oil seal here is hitting on the back of here. Now apparently there is a, an oil seal for one type of flange and an oil seal for another. I don't know which is which, but when, you, when this was on and it was tightened up, you had a really hard time to turn this. In fact, you had to turn it with a half inch drive ratchet. It shouldn't be that tight. So, these guys from Toronto area sent me a rebuild kit. For, for another differential that I'm doing, and I'm going to put a little, a few more details in that later. But they sent me a seal kit, and I thought, oh, brilliant! Like a bearing kit and rebuild kit, because the bearings are really rusty. There, there's a Cotico seal. Uh, FTC, oh, I put my bloody monkey fingers over it again. FTC 5258G, uh, Cotico. I think that's a I think that's a brick part number, but it doesn't really matter where you come from as long as the product's right. And there's the seal, and there's the one we just took out, they're identical. Now, after a bit of digging around, I did find out that, uh, what was that one, 5258? 5258 belongs to FTC 5317 for the shield here. So, I don't know what to think. But that's been running, if you can focus in on that, you can see that's been running and making a groove in there with the bearings. So it's, it seems to be like the wrong one, but the problem is I haven't got one because I don't really like to do diffs. I don't like them at all. But when the seal was removed and we put this all sort of back together again, sort of, go on, here we go, there we go. What I did was, put that back in the scrap bin, I checked them for the tooth contact. And this, this is why I'm remaking this video, not only because my camera <laughs> went wrong again, but so you could actually see. Now, nobody, had, or either they'd not done it before, like the tooth contact, or they'd washed it all off, I don't know, I couldn't see any remains of it. This differential is sort of acceptable. You see where the tooth contact is here? I would have liked it more in the middle. Now, to get that more in the middle, that means we've got to take this apart, take the pinion out, and... Oh, which way is it now? The pinion has to go this way, so we've got to take a little bit off the shim of here. Alright, so that's that one. But do I want to do it? No. 
I don't want to do it, A, because I haven't got any shims, and B, there's 30 different types of shim, and I don't know what's in there. And I don't want to dismantle it, only to find out I can't get any bits. So, it's acceptable as it is, it turns nice, it feels nice, the bearings are good, I have no problems, but why am I so hesitant not to do this? Because these damn things here were made like of cheese. Awful. And they're renowned for breaking in pumas, you know, the TDCIs. Um, it's just a really, really bad design. Uh, this was a, a better design down here. But, again, it's alright for the front, but for the back where you've got all your weight and things like this, well, it's a different story, in my opinion, but just a little bit of a story on these, because, like I say, I know when TDCIs first came out and, and TD5s, they had a lot of problems with these breaking, and it's, it's something to do, apart from Britain going decimal, it's something to do with this, and this, now you can see, look at this. Brit Resto Vision. Now you can see exactly why I'm hesitant. Look at the thickness of the crown wheel on here, and look at the thickness of the crown wheel on here. What that means is, the support's very much the same, but the crown wheels are very thin. And that means the bolts haven't really got a great deal of contact going through them. And when we stripped down that Puma one, uh, was it last year, we found all the bolt heads had snapped off, but the, the, the bolts were finger tight. Now, had somebody been messing about in that before? We don't know. But it seems to be quite common. Now, going back to that TDCI, uh, no, yeah, that TDCI, Puma, we contacted Ashcroft's and we went on their site and we wanted to order one of Ashcroft's own designed differentials. They had one that was just bolt straight in. It wasn't a repaired one, it was a brand new one designed by them. When we came to hit the buy it now button, so to speak, not available. So we contacted them and said, oh, well, sorry that we haven't got any more in stock. Anyway, that was last year. So what we did, in fact, to, to, to pad this story out a little bit, we converted a Salisbury axle to a TDCI. There was a lot of messing about. And I'll tell you what I'll do. Now I've found out on the end credits, like on the end screen, um, I can actually put individual videos on there. So watch this video right to the end and I'll give you some links so you can go and have a look. So, I contacted um, Dave Ashcroft directly on his hotline. <laughs> no, I just emailed him. And I said, oh, have you got any more of those uh, TDCI diffs of yours? He says, no, we only made 30. That was it. So we must have ordered, tried to order the last one <laughs> at that time. You know, another day earlier would have been all right. So... It is a, a known problem. I think in a P38 they were okay because it was a smaller wheel diameter, perhaps a lighter car, uh, who knows, but I'm, I'm not sure why they stopped doing Salisbury's. I think something to do with licensing or something to do with Britain going decimal again. Anyway, that's by the by. So what I'm trying to get at is these guys here with this differential down here, they want to fit that with uh, a GM V8, 5 litre or 6 litre, I don't know, 16,000 litres, I don't know. I don't think it's going to last 5 minutes, to be honest. But, so I've told them, I've covered with my backside, I don't want to touch it. Alright, that's sometimes you have to do that. Now this one here, on the other hand, if we look at the tooth contact, uh, where's a good piece? I, I, I spun it around in my drill. Uh, ah, here we are. Look. <laughs> Zoom in, Mike, I can't bloody see. Now, look at the tooth contact on this one. This one's lovely. You see in here? See it's right up at the top? Let's uh, have a look at the other one and see if you can see, spot the difference. See? This one's lower, so the pinion needs to be moved in. But this one is nice. The backlash is nice. Just right, right amount of backlash. Zoom out, mate. You've seen it now. So, what I'm going to suggest to the guys, because they want to get these back and get in the car, I'm going to suggest for the TDCI type, uh, I don't know, I don't feel comfortable. I think, and, and yeah, 
this is another thing. You try and find out some information how to strip these TDCI diffs down and the settings and the torque settings. There's virtually nothing. It seems to be over the years. You know when you had the old series trucks and you got the workshop manuals, there was two of them. And they used to lay out all the tools that you used to need before you did a job. That was brilliant. And it was really step by step. Nice. Over the years have progressively taken away things. I noticed in TD5s, uh, I think it was TD5, some of the manuals, work, the genuine workshop manuals, don't even cover transfer boxes. They don't want you to know. They, neither did they cover diffs. So I can find out from old books about Salisbury axles because they never change. And also about these axles, uh, these differentials down here, yes, we can find information about them, but not these. So I'm sort of really sort of thinking, oh, what am I getting into here? And of course, I don't want to be known as the go-to guy for doing TDCI, TDCI differentials. All right, so anything else is fair game. So what I'm going to do with, the, with this one here, I'll wait till a sale comes. Now, ah, no, this is what I was going to tell you. I know it's, not, it's supposed to be a quick video, but it turned out to be a ramble. Uh, for the pinions here, uh, it, there exists now STC4858, which is a complete new flange, and these had a spacer in them. Uh, the STC4858 does not need the spacer, and it comes with a seal and a bolt or a new nut. Alright, so that's the way to go, because normally these flanges are knackered. They are really knackered. I think I've got one somewhere. Just, just hold on. No, oh, that's that. I think I threw it away. Well, they do get grooves in them. Madonna. And, um, yeah, I'm sorry looking around for them. But they do get grooves around in them and then they leak. Now, while we're talking about... Uh, while we're talking about axles and leaks and things like this, one thing you should know is that when you've got gears in, like like down here, these type of gears, when you've got gear oil it creates a lot of form and a lot of uh, pressure in your crank in your, not your crankcases, but in your axles. This is why they put breathers on, to, to let the air breathe in and out, because this is forming, so it's making air bubbles and pockets and things like this. Now, it's most important to let the air in and out of the, ca the casing, because if, you, if, the air, if the breather is blocked, that pressure has nowhere else to go but outside of the seal here or your hub seals. It's as simple as that. And that's why you, you get loads and loads and loads of them that have got block pipes or nipped up pipes. And on the old series they were even, well I don't know what they were thinking of there. They had a little brass thing that went in top of your axle. They'd had a little steel ball in. <laughs> they didn't stand a chance of freeing themselves off. They, they were always rusted up. Because the steel ball, rust, hmm, hand in glove, isn't it? Right, that's it. <coughs> Hope you gleaned something from that. Um, but like I say, I am going to do a differential. I've started one when I've stripped it down. When the parts come in, we'll put it back together step by step. See ya. Mm -hmm.